Guess what? It's Friday. Happy Friday. My voice is a little scratchy. It's okay. <laughs> Hi, I am Camille, and I am a homeschool mom of two girls. I don't know what grade they're in. We've lost track of that. <laughs> but today, I do want to talk to you about Texas requirements because I do live in Texas and I am very familiar with Texas. If you're not from Texas, go to hslda.org and get the information that you need for your state, whatever it is that it was that is required. So the first thing that you need in Texas and is very very important when you pull your child out and you need to know this, you need to conduct your homeschool in a bona fide matter, manner, manner. Um, And what that means is you're just making sure that you are sincerely teaching your child, that you didn't pull your child out of school and just let them sleep all day or not do anything. There needs to be some type of work being done in Texas. Um, So with that, the next one is have visual curriculum. So, of course, that goes hand in hand. Now, I know we think of curriculum as you buy these big purchases that has the reading and the math and the language arts and the grammar, all that's included. That is curriculum. Um, But curriculum is also just reading books, having uh, textbooks, having workbooks, worksheets. Movies are part of curriculum. If you go on YouTube and you find documentaries, if you go on any streaming service and you look for a documentary, that can be used as curriculum because you can take from it and pull from it and write out, even on a piece of paper, what you want from your child. What happened in this scene? What happened in this scene? What animal did you see or what animal were they talking about that had four legs and had stripes and it's orange? Like that that you can build your own curriculum like that. So have a visual curriculum. Um, you don't have to go buy all that boxed stuff. So next up, there are some basic subjects that you need to focus on that are required in Texas. And it's amazing that it is not a lot. So the first one is reading. So I talked about books. You can use simple books. You don't have to use a textbook. Um, I kind of stay away from textbooks. I use um, living books, as that's what Charlotte Mason talks about. Um, I'm not really, I guess I am really kind of a Charlotte Mason follower, but they are living books. And what living books are, are real books. Like there is what the life of George Washington. Um, There's up from slavery, which is Booker T. Washington. Those are examples of living books. So you take those and once again, you could pull um, uh, read it and pull some questions and ask your child, well, what age was it that Booker T came out of slavery or when did he do the Tuskegee Institute Institute? Like those are questions that you can cre- create for curriculum and you're reading and that is comes with language arts. You can do grammar with that. Like those are that that's what that is. So next up, um, another basic subject is spelling. Your child needs to learn how to know how to spell in Texas. Um, <laughs> so uh, you can find a lot of spelling books. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video on letting you know how we do spelling because we don't do it how everybody else does it. Um, but they need to know how to spell grammar, parts of speech, using the correct verbiage, you know, for grammar, can your t- child speak correctly? Not using, uh, what, Ebonics, not using the slang that is used today. Can they speak efficiently and can they write efficiently? So next up is mathematics. You, you got to know how to add. You got to know how to subtract. You got to know how to multiply and divide. And those are the, the, the basics of math anyway. And what I've learned is if your child knows their facts, then they can do any type of math. Amazing, right? If you just know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, your child can do any type of math because and if they memorize it and know it, they'll they'll get it. So math is really important because, of course, you do have to go through life knowing how to count. The last one for the basic subjects to focus on is good citizenship. Now, good citizenship used to confuse me because I was like, oh, we have to go out and we have to volunteer. We have to do this and this and this. That's not how good citizenship is 
is I started doing good citizenship as learning history, history about Texas, history about the United States, history about our community. What are the laws? What can you do? What can you not do? I think that should start as early as five, you know, um, respecting others' property, having manners. That's good citizenship. Helping others, and that does not just involve volunteering. Helping others, like when you're going to the store and it's a pool door, you see somebody behind you, keeping the door open for them. That's good citizenship. Uh, back to manners, saying thank you, please. Oh, that's good citizenship, right? Um, and just learning about the laws of everything around you. So the basic subjects to focus on, reading, spelling, grammar, mathematics, good citizenship, and that is for Texas. There is no science. There is no, I can't even think of any, there is, that's the basics of it. Um, so I will talk about science in, a, in another video as well, but the basics, reading, spelling, grammar, mathematics, good citizenship in a bona fide manner. Make sure you are really teaching your child, putting something in front of them that really is valuable for them to learn about whatever it is that you want them to learn or whatever it is that they would like to learn. And having a visual curriculum, having books, having um, worksheets, having something where they could read to you. Movies are in that as well. So those are the Texas requirements. I hope this blesses you because I, as, as I learn, I just want to help you out and share what I have learned. So as always, I pray you have a blessed day. I pray you have a blessed week, a weekend, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.